Welcome to Spotlight Philippians, our invitation for joy as we are in the fourth chapter of this fantastic letter. As we are coming down the pike towards the end of what Paul has to say to the Philippians and the Holy Spirit has to say to you and to me, in today's passage, we're going to hear Paul give a list of quick commands and directions, kind of rapid fire and staccato. This was not uncommon for Paul to do when he's about to wrap up and wind down a letter to a congregation. So let's listen to these instructions and we'll give a few comments as we go along on each one of them. Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven, Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, first of all, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. He's already given that commandment once. We saw it, didn't we? Flipping back in our Bibles to the start, chapter three, verse one. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you is not a trouble to me and it's a safeguard for you. Well, Paul feels like he has to say it yet again right here in this single letter. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, he repeats it. I say again, rejoice. And that's a call for us. We could reiterate what we said in the previous devotion. We've got to be reminded to rejoice in the Lord. If you are like me, I am inconsistent in my rejoicing in the Lord. Sometimes I'm really good at it and I rejoice in the Lord and remember to rejoice in the Lord. And other times I'll just kind of fall off the map altogether. And it'll go for hours, sometimes days that I'm not consciously rejoicing in Jesus Christ. Are you the same way too? Well, then let's listen to Paul again because he doesn't mind saying it to us again and again and again. Be reminded in your life, rejoice in the Lord always. Maybe copy this verse and put it somewhere in a prominent spot. Tape it to your mirror in your bathroom so you see the reminder. Maybe tape it right on a, your driving wheel right there in front of where the steering column is so that whenever you look down, there it is. Rejoice in the Lord always. We need the constant reminder to rejoice in the Lord because as we rejoice in the Lord, it will produce indeed greater joy in our lives. So let's do that. Then he says, let your reasonableness or your gentleness, the word can mean either one, let that be known to everyone. Let people know about your faith in Christ, but let them know about your faith in a Christ where people say, that's a reasonable person. That's a person with a gentle, sensitive heart. It's a person who has a sense of what's known in, in uh, Greek as so for soon a balance, good balance, judgment and wisdom in how to go about living daily life. And then Paul says, the Lord is near. What does he mean by the Lord is near? The little Greek word is engus. The Lord is engus. Well, the interesting thing here is engus can mean the Lord is near, meaning he's going to come again. Paul may have been thinking Jesus is imminent. You never know what day, what hour, what moment Christ is going to return again. And we don't know that anymore now than Paul knew it then. So always be living with the anticipation that the Lord may be near to coming again and live in light that it could be any day, any time. But interestingly, engus also means to be near in terms of space. The Lord is near to us. The kingdom of heaven is near to us. So near that the Holy Spirit indwells us and Christ is in us and we are in him, our hope of glory, and that is near this. So think about nearness in terms of always looking for the return of Christ and nearness always in terms of the fact that he is never far from you. Paul continues, don't be anxious about anything. How many of us, myself included, fight the fight against anxiety? When we feel that anxiety welling up, what is the antidote? The antidote is to pray. 
But pray, as Paul uses, using three terms, we pray with supplications and thanksgiving to the Lord. We make our requests known to him. Are you anxious? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it in supplication. Take it with thanksgiving. And what will happen? The peace of God, which passes our human understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What a great promise that is for us. Are you anxious about something today? Make this part of your devotional life. Confess that anxiety. In the midst of that confession of anxiety, then pray about it. Give thanks to the Lord as you make your supplication known to him, and you will know peace, the peace that comes from our God. That is Invitation to Joy. We'll talk to you next time.